So that right there was my first clue that the builders might not have taken installing this passive radon system too seriously when they built this house. Hi, my name is Scott. I'm Radon Mitigator of Virginia. I make videos for other radon mitigators. Those looking to get in the business. If you're a homeowner, you can stay and hang out. Check out www.nrsv.org. There, plug in your zip code and that'll pull up a list of certified radon professionals in your area if you're looking for one. So we are activating a passive radon system here in this newly constructed home. And here's what I was left with. And you know, this is not the first time I've seen that. You know, yeah, that's cute. But that is a sign that whoever put the pipe in really wasn't taking the radon part of building the house too seriously. And so here's where the rubber meets the road. This is where they're supposed to be tapped into the slab that is this basement floor. And you have to be able to hear that hiss. This appears to be a T and that's a, mostly a suffocated pipe and you know so we're going to seal that up um, well okay so what we're going to do is we're going to shut the fan off we're going to seal that up going to fire the fan back up and then we're going to run the test to let that dictate the next course of action but the moral of the story is if you're a mitigator you need to watch out uh, if you're quoting prices uh, you're going to get calls all the time. Hey, what do, you, what do you charge to activate a passive radon system? Well, it's X. If everything's hunky-dory, um, you're going to need to find your language to get through to your customers to let them know, hey, I'm not trying to get over on you. Um, how successful my activation of your passive radon system highly depends on what was left for me. And this was what was left for me. Uh, does that pipe look plumb to you? You know, when you see the jokey joke radon, you know? Um, and then, there you go. That's what was left. Um, passive radon systems in different zones, you know, they're, uh, they're scrutinized in different ways, you know? I don't know what it's like in your area. In my area, uh, we need to have passive radon systems when the home is built. How they're inspected, I don't know. Um, but I guess you can put a, you can stub a pipe in the ground, write radon on it, and you can get that little check on your uh, certificate of occupancy. I don't know. Um, but I run into this often enough, and that's why I make these videos to help you folks out there. Um, I try to make videos about unusual stuff that I don't usually see in YouTube world about radon. So, hey, if you found this helpful, why don't you smash that like button and consider subscribing. I try to drop lots of content like this all the time. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see how this comes out. Ding, ding, oh, right on, right on, right on. That's my name. So here we are in another attic activating a passive radon system. And these are pretty good indicators that the builders took this part of the job seriously. So this job has a high probability of going well. Also, I've done a few houses in this neighborhood and you know, you get to know your builders and their reputations and you kind of know what to expect after you put your time in the business. All right, back to the other job. Okay, so today we're actually at a completely different house with the exact same situation. Uh, the other folks, uh, we tested it and it came back at 3.9 and they didn't want to do anything about it. So, um, at any rate, we're going to move on and there's always more of these out here. So here we go. In this case, what we're going to do is rather than try to salvage this, uh, we've well, obviously you can tell that we've abandoned that. We're going to make a new suction point right here and just fill that back in with uh, cement and mortar, etc. The picture that you saw was was exactly how the builders had left it, um, believe it or not. And that's just the way it is. And here's how we're going to correct it. Okay, so what I like to do is dry fit my stuff and make marks with the pencils for when I come back to glue it together. And then I've got my little plumb bob trick and uh, I'll make the mark, you know, right around down here for the drilling. Since the pipe's dangling, we're gonna make sure that it's plumb when we do that. So we'll straighten that out, make the mark, drill the hole, 
and rock and roll. So if you've never seen my videos before, um, that's what that's my plumb bob trick. A uh, little piece of plywood cut with a hole saw, electric tape for gription, plumb bob, and, and uh, run that through the center, and uh, it never fails. So we made our pilot hole and everything's hunky-dory there, except it took forever to get through. And uh, so I went ahead and excavated this more. So we got about somewhere between a six to eight inch slab. Uh, there is gravel down there, but see sitting about like that, that's just getting nowhere fast. So if it was, it needed to be way on down in there. So we're doing the right thing. It's gonna be a little harder than we expected, but that's the nature of radon mitigation. So much is concealed from you, and uh, the way you find out is by drilling and doing. <laughs> so, here we go. Okay, so this is unusual. Um, there's, you can see the plastic there, and Yep, there's more concrete where there should be gravel. Um, I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna try to push through and see if I can't break through with this uh, pilot drill, but man, this really throws a wrinkle into our operation. that much concrete to deal with from floor to wherever. Um, I mean, it feels like drilling into a footer. Um, don't forget to go back to plan A. That's why I make these videos. <laughs> Stuff happens uh, for all the mitigators out there. You're not alone. And uh, we'll figure this thing out. Okay, I don't know what the heck is going on here. Um, there's gravel. Um, but this side more lines up with the pipe. That's what I'm trying to work yet. And I feel like I've run this drill for many moons and I feel like I'm actually in mud. So I have no explanation as to why we've got this big block of concrete right around in here. But down in here, uh, we'll see, but I did find a pretty sweet pocket of gravel over here, so we're in good shape to take this pipe and we'll seal it down there like so. Okay, we've got a new pipe sealed in and uh, we kicked it out that way to try to get into the good stuff. And, you know, while I was digging this out and, you know, you get to thinking, what in the world is going on here? Why? And uh, so perhaps but the best theory I've got at the moment is this excess concrete is for some sort of load bearing situation. Um, I mean, I hope it's not a footer dividing the whole thing in half, but because it does, you know, it kicks around and, and that, yeah, just maybe for that one spot. I don't know, <laughs> but at any rate, we're tapped into good gravel now, and um, so we'll go ahead and start filling this back in with gravel and then mortar, concrete, and uh, there you go. So I've usually got at least one of these on the van. Uh, fortunately today, I've got two, and uh, even some of this stuff, but anyway, we're making it work. Okay, so we've got the uh, fan activated in the attic. Got a nice little draw there. That's what we like right about in that range for a, a house with uh, good gravel. That's about the best I could do with the uh, cement. So I'm, I'm happy with that. Alrighty. Okay, so we're out of here. So if you found this video helpful, why don't you smash that like button and consider subscribing. I drop lots of content out here for the Radon community. Does it cost you a dime? It means the world to me. All right, thanks a bunch. See you in the next video.